Welcome to Pharma Guideline, your trusted source for pharmaceutical manufacturing and compliance training. In today's video, we are going to break down change control in pharmaceuticals, what it is, why it matters, and how to implement it in compliance with GMP, ICHQ10 and regulatory expectations. If you work in quality assurance, regulatory affairs, or manufacturing, understanding change control is essential for compliance, product quality, and patient safety. Let's get started. First of all, let us understand what a change control is. Change control is a documented process for managing all changes that could affect the quality of a pharmaceutical product or the GMP compliance of a facility. It ensures that changes are evaluated before implementation. Risks are assessed and controlled. All regulatory and quality requirements are met. Let's examine some examples of changes that require change control. Modifications to equipment, facilities, or utilities. Changes in raw material suppliers. Manufacturing process alterations. Updates to analytical methods. SOP revisions. Software or computerized system upgrades. Regulatory bodies like the US FDA and EMA expect a formal, approved change control system as part of the pharmaceutical quality system. Why change control is important? A robust change control system maintains product quality and consistency. Ensures regulatory compliance with 21 CFR parts 210 and 211, EU GMP, and WHO guidelines. Prevents unintended consequences from poorly managed changes. Demonstrates traceability and accountability during inspections. Without proper change control, companies risk Deviations and nonconformances Regulatory findings, FDA 483 and warning letters Product recalls and patient safety issues Regulatory references Key guidance documents for change control include ICHQ10 Pharmaceutical Quality System emphasizes science and risk-based approaches. EU GMP Chapter 1 and Annex 15 outlines expectations for change control and validation. 21 CFR 211 Part 100 and 211 Part 160 US regulations requiring control over changes to manufacturing and testing procedures. Types of changes Not all changes are equal, classify them by risk level. Major changes high potential impact on product quality, example, change in manufacturing site, API supplier change. Often require regulatory submission before implementation. Moderate changes, some risk to quality, example, equipment replacement with a different model. Require QA approval and possibly regulatory notification. Minor changes, low or negligible risk, example, minor document formatting changes. Handled internally, often without regulatory reporting. Change control process flow. Let's go through the typical steps in change control. Step 1. Change proposal or initiation. Every change starts with an idea, and in a GMP environment, even small changes must be formalized. Any employee, whether from QA, production, engineering, or even IT, can propose a change. This is done by filling out a change control form. This form captures a clear description of the proposed change, the reason for the change, the scope, what areas, equipment, or documents are impacted, any affected systems or departments, and the proposed implementation date. It's crucial to define the change clearly and completely, because this is what drives the next steps. Step 2. Impact Assessment Next comes the most critical phase, Impact Assessment. This step is conducted by a cross-functional team, typically involving quality assurance. Production 
engineering, regulatory affairs, and quality control. Their goal is to identify potential risks and determine whether the change could affect product quality, require validation or requalification, need a regulatory submission or prior approval, interrupt ongoing batches or processes. To make this evaluation robust, teams often use risk management tools like FME, failure modes, and effects analysis. HACSP hazard analysis and critical control points. This step helps ensure the change is well understood and that nothing important is overlooked. Step 3. QA review and approval. Once the impact is fully assessed, QA steps in as the gatekeeper. QA reviews all documentation and evaluations to ensure risks have been addressed. Validation needs are identified. Regulatory impact is considered. All departments have weighed in. Then, QA either approves or rejects the change. Only an approved change control can proceed. If rejected, the reasons are documented and the change must be revised or cancelled. Step 4. Implementation Planning Now that the change is approved, we need a controlled plan to carry it out. This includes defining detailed steps for execution, assigning responsibilities, setting timelines, and identifying any training needs. For example, if a new software version is to be implemented, operators may need training before they begin using it. Proper planning ensures the change is done safely, consistently, and in compliance. Step 5. Execution of change. This is where the change is actually implemented, but always in a controlled and documented manner. Execution must follow the approved plan exactly. Every action must be logged, initialed and traceable. This step may also involve coordination with validation, IT, or maintenance, depending on the nature of the change. Step 6. Verification and Effectiveness Check After implementation, it's time to ask, did the change work as expected? This step involves reviewing if the change achieved its intended purpose, confirming that no unintended consequences occurred, conducting additional testing, sampling, or monitoring if needed. For example, if a cleaning agent was changed, additional microbial monitoring might be required to ensure no contamination issues. Only after verifying effectiveness can the change be considered successful. Step 7. Closure Finally, QA conducts a final review and formally closes the change. This includes confirming all steps were followed. Ensuring verification data is satisfactory and updating the change control log. All documentation must be archived, indexed, and kept readily available for regulatory inspections. Closure doesn't just mean the end of the process, it also ensures that the change is traceable and compliant. Common problems in change control Some frequent mistakes include incomplete risk assessments. Implementing changes without approval. Poor documentation of impact evaluation. Failure to assess regulatory reporting requirements. Not verifying the effectiveness of implemented changes. These can easily trigger regulatory observations. Best practices for an effective system. To strengthen your change control process. Train employees on when and how to raise change requests. Keep change control forms clear and complete. Use a change control SOP aligned with ICHQ10 and Annex 15. Maintain a change control log for traceability. Link changes with deviations, kappa and validation documents. Periodically audit your change control system. In summary, Change control is not just paperwork, it's a critical quality system element that protects patient safety and ensures compliance. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, 
subscribe to Pharma Guideline, and share it with your colleagues. For free GMP resources and detailed change control SOP templates, visit pharmaguideline.com. Until next time, stay compliant, stay confident. Join channel membership to get member-specific videos and courses.